Hey, I want to talk to you about a really embarrassing and touchy subject for a lot of people. What do you do when the community hoe shows up? You know, that trashy person, that one that um, you don't want sitting in your pew at church. The, the one that you, you really, you know what, if she's going to be around, that you'd rather just go off to the corner of her by herself somewhere because she's drug addicted and, and she somehow has just decided to just sell her body for drugs and, 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 people just look at her in a, in a way that's derogatory. We don't want her around. What do you do when she shows up? See, that's exactly what happened in Luke, the seventh chapter. Jesus is eating with a Pharisee by invitation. This, inv this invitation was given to him probably because this Pharisee, this religious person, wanted the celebrity of Jesus' presence at his house. A lot like people in church today or Christians in the community. You want the appearance of Jesus is with me. You want that celebrity. You want people to look at you and say, you know, he's a good person. She's a good person. But you know what? Jesus looks past all that bull. He looks at the heart. And as this Pharisee's talking to Jesus, this community hoe comes up behind him and he starts crying all over his feet. Now, she's crying, and she's just wiping his feet with her hair. She's humiliated. She's humbled. She anoints his feet with oil. And this Pharisee, this religious person, goes, man, if Jesus was who he says he is, or who all these people, you know, I heard he'd been raising the dead. I heard he brought people back to life. He's, he's healed people. He's given their hearing back, their eyesight. You know, he, he's supposed to be something. But if he, knew, if he really was, he wouldn't let this woman, this sinner, touch him. Jesus knew his thoughts. She knew that woman's thoughts. He sees everything and knows all. And so he corrected this man. And he let him know really quick who was at fault. But here's my point today. We, a lot of us see through Simon's eyes, we see somebody's faults. We see their flaws. We see what's wrong with them, especially if it's a great flaw, like a, like a community hoe, somebody that is drug addicted and selling their body so they can get drugs or, or, or whatever the case may be. We see through Simon's eyes. And then we think, you know, I'm glad I'm not like that person. I don't, can you imagine what Simon thought when he saw her walking in his, his house? The humiliation, how dare her come in my house? But you know what the difference is? Jesus didn't see her like Simon saw her. Jesus saw a lost, wandering soul that needed help. Somebody that he loves with an everlasting love and somebody that he wanted to forgive and help. He saw somebody that was willing to serve him when the religious man wouldn't even so much as wash his feet, which was a cordial thing to do at the time when you have a guest come in, wouldn't do anything to honor him. This woman washed his feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. She showed service to him. She showed, showed faith to him. And that's why he said, your sins, which are many, hallelujah, are forgiven. God looks at our heart. He looks at our faith. And he wants us to know today that when we raise ourselves up and put ourselves on a standard and think we're above others, that he's going to smack us and put us back down where we belong. Because he says your righteousness, your greatness, your holiness that you think you have is as filthy rags. When we come to the Lord, we need to remember how the thief on the cross come to him. That one that was hanging there, there was two of them hanging around him and one of them railed on him and said, get us off this cross if you be God. That's just like a lot of Christians today. Get me out of this stuff, Lord. Get get this straighten out my life. Help me to be what Joe Osteen says I am. Help me to have my best day now. Uh, Lord, I heard my promotions on the way. He told me my promotions on the way. See, that's all warm and fuzzy and that makes you feel good, don't it? But it'll scare your soul to hell. What you need to understand is warm and fuzzy ain't gonna cut it. Only the real word of God is going to change your life. And as that thief looked at the one that was railing on Christ, railing on the very one that had his beard plucked out, had his back beaten, the Roman soldiers put a purple robe around him and kicked him and might made fun of him and smacked him over the head. He realized that when he did all that and hanging on that cross that he did it for him. He realized hanging there between heaven and hell that God himself had come from glory and was spilling his blood to save him from his sins. And he said, Lord, remember me. Hallelujah. When you come into your kingdom. He says, today, you'll be with me in paradise. He looked at that friend of his on the other side of Jesus. He said, don't you fear God being in the same condemnation? When you judge that community hoe or whatever label you put on that person, the drunk, the community drunk, you know, whatever we, you know, we all think it. When you say that or you think that, you need to think this. Jesus sees your heart. Don't you fear God being in the same condemnation? If it weren't for the grace of God, you wouldn't have anything, and I wouldn't either. 
but it's by His great love and mercy that we have eternal life. It's by His great love and mercy that He didn't give us what we deserve. He loves us today. He loves you today. Church, let's repent of our sins and let's turn from our evil ways and let's serve God and look at other people through the eyes of Christ and not through ourselves. Please share this.